Hi, I'm Mark Lawson, president of ECS Publishing Group, and we want to welcome you to this special visit with Philip Stopford. We're going to be assisted by two people in our office, Ian Blaylock and Jessica Bircher, so you may see their names pop up from time to time. We also want you to know if you have questions as we go along, please put them into the chat and we will monitor that as well and do our best to address anything that you would like to uh, talk about on with, to do with this new mass. So Philip, uh, I know you recently moved back to the UK. Can you give us an update on where you're living and what you're doing right now? Yes, um, thank you very much for having me this afternoon here in the UK and this morning where you are uh, in uh, St. Louis. Um, it's great to be with you. And uh, yeah, I moved from uh, Christchurch, Bronxville, just outside New York, back to the UK in July of last year. And I brought my dog as well, which was a very interesting experience. Brought my dog on the on British Airways. So they were very good. Um, and so we're both back here, back with the family. I spent five, six years um, in America and it was a great experience. And it, I thoroughly enjoyed working with the choir, but it's lovely to be back home. Um, and I'm, you know, with things like this, with Zoom now and with uh, so much sort of online um, interaction, um, I feel I can do lots here still and uh, still doing commissions and uh, composing and yeah you know carry, carrying on it's great and working with uh, the local um, I'm president of the Leighton Buzzard Festival Singers so I conducted a little concert with them as well um, in great. November. In fact it was Miss Adair's Nabiscum. There you go there you go well the perfect lead-in so the uh, one of the reasons we're talking is because of this new mass hold that up again for us. Yes here it is well here Here's the um, here's what the sort of copy that I started with, and then okay. here's the published uh, version. Much prettier, much prettier. <laughs> <laughs> so here is the the published uh, version. Yeah, by yourselves by Morning Star Music. So and so, tell us about this new mass. I mean, tell us the how it got how it came to be. Who commissioned it? Uh, a little bit about so, it. Yeah. So. Um, you know, this was sort of a project um, pre-pandemic. Um, I spent 2000 and, from 2003 to 2012, I lived in Belfast in Northern Ireland. I was director of music at St Anne's Cathedral in Belfast. And there's a wonderful school in Belfast the, uh, called, his short name is Methody, but it's a Methodist College Belfast. And they were celebrating their 150th anniversary and so they asked me, would I write a piece for the 150th anniversary concert for their school choir and school orchestra? Um, and it was premiered in March 2019 in the Waterfront Hall uh, to about a thousand, more than a thousand people, I think, about 1500 people in the, in the hall there. And um, it was great, you know, it was a really lovely thing to do. Um, and I wanted to write something, it was, I've written lots of little anthems, as hopefully some of you know, Do Not Be Afraid in my father's house and the Christmas Luli Lulali Lay and things like that. I've done lots of little things like that, but it was time to um, grow up and write a big piece of music. <laughs> so I have, um, I have uh, come forward with a, a half an hour work for choir and orchestra and it's uh, great fun it's been great and fun. it is it is it's wonderful and you then turned around and did it in bronxville and so i did yeah i well, did it in bronxville in the november of 2019 and then of course the world sort of shut down early 2020 and so we're coming out of this now and we did the english premiere because uh, um, the Northern Ireland premiere was in was it Belfast in Northern Ireland, but we did the English premiere just last November, two months ago, uh, here in Leighton Buzzard in Bedfordshire, about half an hour from London. We are with the Leighton Buzzard Festival Singers. So it, we had the Northern Ireland premiere, the New York or American premiere, and the and the British premiere. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about the overall structure of the of the piece and what movements you have, and then uh, maybe a little bit about the instrumentation. So let's talk sure. about that too before we look at some samples. Yeah. So um, I, I decided that I'd like to do a Latin mass. Um, 
even though it was from Methodist uh, college, which you would think the Methodists would like English, but they were happy. They were happy to have a Latin mass. And of course, Latin, the Latin mass is the, is something that many, many composers have, have tackled and, and um, it's the uniform singing language as well. So it's, it's easy and accessible to everybody all over the world. Uh, and we are in eight movements. We have a Kyrie on its own. We have a Sanctus and a Benedictus and an Arnius Dei on their own. So that's four movements. And then the Gloria is divided into four. Um, sometimes the Gloria in a, the Gloria feels like it could be in three sections actually, but I managed to squeeze in an extra, extra little short passage at uh, God the Father Almighty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's how the, the structure, it's eight movements. And really the Curie, Sanctus, Benedictus and Arnius could be sung liturgically with piano or organ as in the choral score. But it's the Gloria in the four movements. I think the extended Gloria moves it into the concert repertoire. Right. So I'd like to think it was flexible. It, 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 would, be, it would be great liturgically in, in um, Advent and Lent when we don't do the Gloria. So um, it's flexible in, in, that, in those terms as well. And the orchestration is, um, it's printed in the, so here's the, the front cover and then there's some program notes. And then on the, on the next page is the orchestration. And um, I've worked out, I think it can be done with 22 players, 22 instrumentalists. So flute, oboe, clarinet, bassoon, horn, three trumpets, one trombone, uh, timpani, suspended cymbal, harp or piano, and then violin one, violin two, viola, cello, and double bass. You do need two players for the violin one, violin two, viola, and cello, because I'm a bit of a fan of a rich string texture. So those parts are doubled. But uh, in essence, it's, um, I like to think it's quite a, a full orchestration, but with a, a relatively small number of players. Right. Right. It, yeah, it isn't overwhelming. And I thought that, no. uh, I, I, and I think as you can hear on the recording that we'll play in just a second, that you had not a, I, I, how large was your choir at Bronx? Well, we did it with, oh, the choir. So we had two choirs. Yeah, we, um, uh, Gabriel from, my friend Gabriel from uh, up in Connecticut, he came with his choir and uh, um, they, were, they were just fantastic and added to our choir in Bronxville. And so we probably had 45, 50 singers and then 22, the, the minimum 22 players. And it's a lovely, full, rich sound. Um, and the balance was so good. I think that's the thing. I, you know, if you've got 22 players and your choir has to be a certain kind of size to sing with 22 players, but that, it handled it really well. I think your orchestration yeah. lends itself to a nice blend. It isn't an overwhelming sound i guess well it is an accompaniment at the end of the day you know it is an accompaniment to the choir and i think you know the, the choir has the the advantage of also a bit of being able to sing the words <laughs> and we need to hear those words we need to hear those words at the time that they're sung but so the orchestration is designed to to support the singing and have moments of color at, at times actually when the choir may, may not be singing right and i think that it's is that by the way, I really hear in this work, there is a lot of color. You did a wonderful mm -hmm. job of orchestration to create a lot of color. So, um, well, let's listen to a bit of the Kyrie. So Ian, if you could uh, share your screen and put on a bit of the Kyrie, and then we'll talk about it after we hear about a, two minutes worth of it.
good example of the beginning of it, at least. Such a beautiful sound. And I think the, the what I pick up there, Philip, is how you save the bigger sound of the orchestration for when the choir was not singing to balance yeah. off. That was uh, very nice, creates a good balance. And actually, the, or the orchestra can play the, the very high notes because actually the, the melody, then as I've gone into F major, actually then it goes up to a top C. So that, you know, you pull the choir out of that bit and, uh, and, and then the music is, it's, it's sensible. Mm -hmm. But you have the orchestra there, so of course use them. You know? Right, right. And you did this at uh, an, an Advent time as a Christmas concert, but it doesn't have to be done at that time of year. It can be done pretty much any time of year, can't it? Well, it can. A mass can be performed. I mean, you you know, you go to Handel's Messiah has done all, the, done all year round. You know, I've heard, seen summer performances and performances in Lent to the various bits, you know, um, the, the appropriate bits. Uh, but this is this is mass of God with us. This is the, I should explain that the, the the title of the of the piece is Missa Deus Nobiscum. The school motto for Methodist College in Belfast is Deus Nobiscum, God with us. And of course, God with us is Emmanuel, which is God came to be with us on earth in the in the form of Jesus Christ. You know, so this is this could be it's ideal actually for a Christmas concert because of the title. <laughs> And, and because it's singable and, and lovely, I hope. Uh, but it's also a, a Latin mass that can be sung any time of the year. But it just so happens that it has that sort of um, Christmas concert type feel about it as well. And the title lends itself very nicely to that. So I want us to hear um, a little bit of the Gloria. You might want to say kind of what, how you move from the Kyrie to the Gloria, and then we will kind of uh, listen to a little bit of the Gloria as well. Sure. So I actually did a spreadsheet before I wrote this piece, and I decided that I I, I decided that I needed to work out which movements, what, what the movements that what the feel of the movement should be. So obviously with the glory, joyful, uplifting, that type of thing, Kyrie more reflective. And I literally wrote Kyrie D major, Gloria B, B flat major. Uh, and I, then I extended it to Kyrie D major strings predominantly, Gloria B flat major trumpets, because this is um, you know this is a, this is suitable for Methodi Methodist College have a wonderful choir and uh, uh, in fact they have won choir of the year several times over here in the UK, and um, I wanted it to be accessible for the kids, but it's not a kids piece. Um, they just do it really, really beautifully. They did it really beautifully, and we did it really beautifully in, in in New York. I like to think as well, and so, but it is sensible to make the brass concentrate their their music in B flat, which is of course brass trumpets trumpets in B flat and stuff. So it was all thought out in that way uh, before writing the music, and. One of the one of the things I find the most difficult in co in composing is just getting my foot in the door. It's like I'm standing at the front door of the piece of music, and I can be standing there for three weeks, and then suddenly, I mean, the Kyrie, you know, this was this was premiered by an Irish Irish choir, and the Kyrie is definitely the first three notes, first four notes of Oh Danny Boy, Oh Danny Boy, Kyrie, but that got me in the door to a beautiful melody, and then the same with the Gloria that we're about to hear. There's this, you know, the Gloria has been set so many times. I probably spent three, four weeks thinking, Gloria, Gloria, nah, 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 nah. and then all of a sudden, Gloria, 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 and then the door opens and I walk into the composition. That's yeah. sort of what happened. Yeah. Well, you set it up very well. So let's hear some of the Gloria. <laughs>
good. That's a good place to stop. So um, what's hard about playing excerpt on that, Philip, is I don't know where to stop. It is so just so well put together. Every one thing leads to the next. And uh, it's just a joy to listen to. And I think it would be a joy to sing as well. So uh, congratulations. Great. Just, oh, just a wonderful, you. wonderful sound. So um, then in the fifth movement, you kind of come back to that same theme, but you also add kind of different material as well. I think that you did a, a brilliant job with kind of making it its own movement, but yet including this material. Um, what were you what were you thinking there and how did that come about? Well, I think that always happens, isn't it? You have to have, you know, if you, we would never have, if we didn't have A, we would never have A, B, A. So, then, you know, that's a very basic way of putting it. But really, you know, I, um, I always felt that that material needed to start the Gloria and finish the Gloria so that it framed the, the, the movement as a whole, even across the four movements. Um, and, of course, working out uh, Gloria, 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 uh, needs to be needs to fit with quantum to solo song to us or uh, and there's just a little bit of basic maths that needs to needs to be done there and of course it isn't really two solus dominus dominus but it has to be musically so you know it, it's it, the the glory is notoriously difficult to set really because it's not it's uneven mm -hmm. you know it's an it's a, it's not a it's not really it's not a versified hymn which is always much easier Christ is our cornerstone. So, e well, not, I shouldn't say easy, but it's much, e it's much easier to compose Christ as our cornerstone because it's a hymn, you know. Yes, right. In my father's house was more, more tricky because, again, you, you've, got to, you've got to balance the music out of an un, from an unbalanced text. Right, right. And that, so, and that can create difficulties. But yeah. it, was, no, it was great fun. And I felt that what I felt that it needed to start with that material and then you get into the Jesu Christ, come Santo Spiritu. And I wanted each of the parts to have their own chance at that little melody as well. That's another thing. So the soprano gets her Jesu Christ, the sopranos get the soprano soloists, then the sopranos, then the altos, and then the tenors and basses together. I thought I'll keep those together just to yeah. you know, give them some solid solidarity. So then you turn, and in the seventh movement, when you do the Benedictus, you wrote this just for treble voices, and it's quite beautiful. And also, I should say that we also publish this movement separately right now as yeah. well. But um, this, this is just such a beautiful, you could do it with a soloist if you didn't uh, have, I mean, you did, I actually knew a trio, would, I think you'd have to have a trio. Well, you could open it with the soloist. Yes. That's something that, you know, because it starts with the opening solo line, just one part, and then splits into the three. So there would be the option of bringing back the soprano soloist from the Gloria if you would like to. And actually, we did that in the concert here uh, in November, and actually it worked really, really well. But the, the reason behind this is that actually the, the people that commissioned the Mass wanted something for the junior choir at the school. And that's why the Benedictus, I felt that the Benedictus would, would work well for the junior choir. It's a shorter text. And uh, yeah, you know, and I, I, thought that, I thought that they would enjoy, enjoy this style of, of movement, which is a simpler choir to just accompanied by the strings. Yeah, I thought uh, it's really quite beautiful. And I thought we'd just listen to a little bit of it. Yeah. As well. yes.
idea of that. Then, of course, you then develop it and develop it into the three parts, and uh, it flows quite nicely. So then um, that brings us to the final movement, which is a beautiful Agnus Dei. Uh, and it begins with harp and very quiet entrances. And you end this in a, an extremely reflective way versus a bombastic send you out the door uh, kind of idea. Talk about your thinking about how to end a mass like this. What were you going for? Well, this has been the eternal problem for composers for a very, very long time because the end of the Arnius Day is grant us peace. And of course, many of the Mozart masses are Donna nobis pacem pacem, Donna. You know, they're all very, that's a Mr. Brevis indeed, I think. Um, they're all very joyful. And often in, often in uh, those masses, uh, they go, they take, moment, they take actually material from the Kyrie uh, often. So that again, you're framing the whole mass in material from the very opening to the very end. Um, so I, and the, the Agnes Day falls in three sections, Lamb of God that take us through away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, that's repeated and then grant us peace. So it comes in the three sections. I also, um, I also wanted to bring together the two uh, keys that have been central to this, you know, the D major in the strings and the B flat major in the brass and sort of amalgamate the two together in this sort of intense, um, you know, plea for mercy really uh, in the in the Arnie's day. And then um, I also wanted it to be going somewhere musically. So there's this, there's this bass um, pedal note, the D all the way through. The D is in the bass, the D major fits on the top, the D is in the bass, the B flat major fits on top of the Ds, and D minor comes in sort of in a strong way for the first time as well. Um, and then you get this warmth of suddenly in the last two pages, page 78 and 79, you're getting 79 pages for your money there. Uh, <laughs> on page 78, suddenly you get this G major, this such warmth of this grant us peace and I let it build and build and build until we get a big um, big E flat major chord on top of the D pedal note as well. And then it comes down, comes down. And I felt that it had to finish with grant us peace. It had to finish quietly, but it's very, it's a sort of one that really builds and builds and builds. And then, and, and everything that's come before sort of molds together and has a bit of tension together and then relaxes into um, the Prince of Peace. That's ultimately yeah. what Jesus Christ is, the Prince of Peace. So I'm going to ask Ian to play about the first minute of the piece and then actually skip over and play the last about minute and a half of the piece oh. so we hear the end. So Ian, if you don't mind doing it that way. Maybe play toward the end. Yeah. Uh, yeah, something right in there.
Very nice. Very nice. So um, I'm going to kind of tell people where they can find this. I'm going to ask, uh, ask Ian to share his screen. There is our product page on this. And you can look at the preview at the top right, or you can also scroll down. Yes, there you can see all the different movements in the recording part of it. You can see the program notes and instrumentation and see samples. And then if you go to the bottom, you'll find these videos that we've been sharing. And you can see that little hamburger menu on the right and each movement you can watch individually. So uh, you should be able to find and, and preview this work quite well. I think you also, Philip, have these on your YouTube page. Um, I do, yes. YouTube page as well. So um, we hope people will take time to look and to explore and uh, hopefully we'll find joy in looking and exploring as well as performing this work. So um, I wanted to see if there were any questions that came in before we close. Um, don't see any, but uh, okay, good. Well, thank you for joining us. And Philip, this is a wonderful work, a wonderful contribution to the repertoire. And I hope that many choirs will enjoy singing it. So thank, thank you, you very much. I hope you so. work on it. It's a pleasure. So, all right. You have a wonderful day. Thank you all for joining us. Goodbye.